Um, what was more, I, <laughs> um, they actually had yellow watermelon there. That was the first time I ever tried yellow watermelon. It was good. It was, good. It was, it was like a, it was, a, it kind of tastes like watermelon. Um, it's yellow. So self-explanatory. Night number three. Night number three was a, in Colorado Springs. And uh, it was just in this little neighborhood right in the Springs. And we, we've played there actually a couple times in, our, in the past. Their name is the Heralds. And they've been big patrons and supporters of our music ever since we started touring. I think we did a show at their house maybe the first, the first year we went, we went touring. But I guess they had us in 2019 and 2017. Which was like six or seven years ago now. And just kind of stayed friends with them over the years and every year it feels like the show gets a little bit bigger and we play for new people. So it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. So it was a backyard show. Um, they, they have a, like a whole stage that they, um, that they like cleared out for us to play on. Mr. Harold has built a stage in his backyard a really nice stage with a, a covering over it and we played there a year ago and it was like a wooden platform um, and so this year when we played there there was actually a back sides and a top and some really cool art in there uh, so it was, it was fun to come back and get to see um, what was changed and that's cool one of the cool parts I remember about this show they had like a wood like a wood pizza oven there, there's a massive pizza oven there. Uh, a pizza making shack, a pizza shed, a, a brick oven. And he's always making pizzas during the show, so he's feeding everyone while the show's going on. And I think, I, I definitely remember that from last time. Oh yeah, the pizza was so good. It was made in their oven right there. <laughs> they had this really cool like stone oven, outdoor oven to make pizza. And I guess they do this uh, somewhat often where they invite bands to, to play, but it felt very special. It was, they're just very hospitable hosts. and Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great pizza. <laughs> pizza oven. Pizza oven, yes, that night. The, the, f the food of concerts usually cues my memory in to, to find, like, like sort through the files and be like, mm, a pizza, pizza, oh, I love those people. <laughs> I think another thing I liked about that show is just the, the hospitality, because the host just invites friends that he wants to see, and then the friends invite friends that he doesn't even know. And he just stands behind the counter of the pizza oven the whole show, wearing our Riverside shirt, He's ready to go. It's probably like from five years ago. And he just dishes out pizza all night because that's what he loves to do. And so it's just cool to see kind of somebody who wants to serve in that way. I actually didn't have any pizza that night. Oh, no. I had, a, I had like a bite of somebody's crust. That's about it. Um, <clears throat> I think it was Trey mentioned that you guys played a wedding there at one point. Oh, yeah, yeah. So over the course of getting to know the Heralds, um, you know, I think that we became pretty pretty special in their life. Um, their daughter, Jamie, um, was getting married last year, and we actually played them, a, we played them a show like the night before their wedding, which was really special, and it was a surprise. So that's always, a, that's a crazy honor, you know, and when someone says, hey, my daughter's getting married, and you mean a lot to us, and we want you to play, you know, this show before their wedding. So we do wedding, we do weddings from time to time. I think we do probably like three or four weddings a year on average from folks that have found our music um, either through a friend or they just found it by giving us a follow and keeping up with us over the years. And that still kind of blows me away sometimes when people, people go, oh yeah, your song, your song Oregon, Virginia, or your song this or that. That's the song that helped us fall in love. Sort of as the songwriter, I'm like, this is kind of, this is wild. I didn't, you don't really think about that kind of thing, about 
what a song can mean to someone else. So we did this, this really funny thing. Um, Trey, our banjo player, he also plays with his brother in a, a folk funk band. They call themselves the Lindsley Brothers. And it was, it was really fun because I had a friend named Peter. His name is Peter Burkholder. Come and play saxophone with a couple songs and we created a new little segment of a show when he comes called Five Minutes of Funky Folk. Five minutes of folky funk. Five minutes of funky folk. <laughs> then we took like a, a ten minute break, or a five minute break. It was supposed to be five minutes. It ended up being like ten minutes. But then it ended up being like 15 minutes of funky folk. Um, and it was... I'm, I'm happy for the extension. <laughs> and he really got to... He really got to show some cool things of music. And he's... Clearly very, very good and talented and uh, at what he does. And... and he's an amazing saxophone player. So we wanted to surprise the, the audience. He, he brought Peter on stage, he brought out his saxophone, and they played a really funky Lindsley Brothers song called Simpler Times. And uh, it was, it's just a fun song. And it was just really fun to have a saxophone on stage just for, just for a second. Just not something you really see at a folk concert a lot of the times. And then my other favorite part about the show is that in our acoustic song, um, there was a bunch of hay bales in front of the crowd, so whoever had a solo that night would get up on a hay bale and play their solo on top of the hay bale. It's just a really funny, unique situation. Um, but I forgot that we had Peter. He already put his saxophone away. So during the solo section where everyone's doing solos, I saw Peter over there, and I was like, Peter! Give me a mouth saxophone, but I, in the moment, my brain left me. That whole night, my brain was just gone. Like I, I couldn't even like spell people's names when I was trying to introduce them, and I forgot what a saxophone was. And I was like, "Give me a mouth," and I, I just couldn't say it for some reason. And the audience was laughing at me. It was, it was memorable. We always try to. It feels like we always just try to have fun with the the environment that we're with. So there was hay bales, so let's dance in the hay bales during that song at some point. Um, that's why I love these guys, because we don't take ourselves too seriously and we just have fun. Also, I have written down, uh, you guys left Trey. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. So we showed up in two different cars to the show in Colorado Springs. And I guess we hadn't really discussed who's riding back with who. And we go to pull out and everybody, which I think is in our van. And then I figured Taper and and Trey went in the, in the Prius. And so we pull out and say our goodbyes. And then all of a sudden we get a call from Trey. It's like, you left me. <laughs> so we had to pull around. It was, Luckily, he caught us before we got too far away, but, but yeah, that was kind of funny. Hey, if you've enjoyed what you've been watching um, and you want to follow us on other places other than YouTube, we're on Instagram and Facebook at The Riverside Folk. So that's our name, The Riverside and Folk, the kind of music we play. Thank you. Have a great day.